So you might be wondering why I'm carrying this black glove around, and it's because I actually found poison ivy in the garden and I want to remove it. And for those of you who have never had the pleasure of getting in a poison ivy patch, you might not know that it causes a severe rash. And it's also one of those things that you actually can't burn either because if you get poison ivy in your lungs, it could actually kill you. Today, I wanna to actually teach you how to identify poison ivy from all the other things that look like poison ivy. And there's a lot of things that actually look like poison ivy, which is kind of crazy because I'm back here, saw the poison ivy, and again, the reason why I have this black glove is because I am going to probably toss this later because I am going to pull the poison ivy out and you don't really want to get the sap of the poison ivy on you because that is actually what causes the rash. So I have my yellow glove that I'm going to be showing you the poison ivy lookalikes and I have my black glove to show you the actual poison ivy. This is what I noticed, this three-leaved plant right here. And this is to me unmistakably poison ivy and this actual area was covered with poison ivy and we had two volunteers come out with like almost like hazmat suits <laughs> removing all the poison ivy and you may wonder like well how does it actually get here and poison ivy berries are actually a very good food source usually within the fall and winter months for birds because when food is scarce birds will come and pretty much eat anything and I've planted a lot of amazing trees and plants back here that will give birds berries but poison ivy also has berries too. And the birds will eat the berries, it'll go through the digestive system of the bird and they will poop it out. And that poop is a wonderful medium to actually grow plants. And the seeds will germinate um, wherever the bird actually places their poop. So that's probably what, ha what happened with these unless there was like leftover seeds in here and it, was, it got turned up. But how do you actually tell this apart from say, coming over here and showing you this, which is growing right next to some poison ivy. This is not poison ivy. It actually happens to be a naturalized species from Japan, strangely enough called Boston ivy. It's a type of Parthenocissus. But, you know, just, you know, a few feet in this direction, I'll actually show you another plant that looks like poison ivy. So this is Parthenocissus kinkafolia. Now this is a variegated version that I planted and you can see that it has these five leaflets, but let me show you the native non-variegated species because that's the one that looks a little bit more like poison ivy. So come over here. And again, all of this stuff is growing just within this small 800 square foot space, which I think is a really good opportunity to teach you because this stuff grows right next to one another. So this is Parthenocissus kinkafolia, or called Virginia creeper, um, five leaf creeper, and it, it has these five leaves. And then you have this right here, which is again, more uh, Boston ivy, which is so funny because it all looks the same. And then there's one more that I have to show you, and then we'll go over in detail how you could tell them apart. Now this is kind of already tree-like, but when box elder or ash leaf maple is just starting out, it'll look like this, three leaves right here. But if you could see as it starts to grow into a tree, it gets these pinnately compound leaves that are alternate. And alternate just means that they're across from one another. So this is not something that poison ivy does, but I will probably find a, a younger variety of box elder or ash leaf maple to show you Actually, you know, there's one that's growing by my garden. So come over there and then once I show you that, I'll go over how you could tell them apart from one another. Oh, it's back there. So this is an early stage ash leaf maple or box elder. As a matter of fact, I'll just pull it out because it's just so superficially planted in there. And you could see how that could easily become or look like a poison ivy with the three leaflets. This one actually is still attached to one another. So you can see it almost is just like one with a leaf that's coming off the side, but you can start to see how it dissects itself, but it's still pinnately compound. So that means that it's alternate and it has these different um, leaflets, but when it's young, it only has these three leaflets and it starts to develop more leaflets as it gets older. So again, something that looks a lot like poison ivy. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take that back so that we could compare it. 
a little bit more closely. All right, so let's take a closer look at poison ivy and see what differentiates it from the others. If you take a closer look at this poison ivy, you will see that this petiole right here, this like throat of this leaflet is quite long compared to these other petioles of the leaflet. In fact, these leaves just basically connect to the stem, whereas this terminal leaflet actually has this long neck. That is one really good defining characteristic of poison ivy. Now this will eventually vine much like Boston Ivy, which I'll show you here. And I'll show you how you could tell these two different ones apart because if you look at the petiole here, it doesn't have really a long neck the same way that this poison ivy does. Actually, all the little petioles are attached in pretty much equidistant way from the actual stem. So these little red throats that you could see here. Another way that you could actually tell this apart is if we get a closer up look, you could see that they start to tendril. And these are quite small, but at the end of these little tendrils, they have these like frog-like suction cups. So if you could see that right there, that's what they use to attach to the walls or to stone or anything along those lines. And actually, if you try to remove them from the wall, you'll see that their little suction cups really stick on there. And that is one thing that the poison ivy doesn't have. It doesn't have these frog-like suction cups. Now, box elder or ash leaf maple as it's called, just has these leaflets like this and it's oftentimes growing up like a tree. And you might actually see leaf, leaflets like this where they haven't really fully dissected yet. And as I had mentioned before, they are alternate from one another. So you could see that these are not necessarily alternate. They're kind of like growing off of all sorts of different kinds of ways, whereas this is literally across from one another. So this one's across from this one, this one's across from this one, this one's across from this one, and so on and so forth. So that's how you could tell that this is a ash-leaved maple or a box elder. So let's get over and take a look at the Parthenocystis kinkafolia. So we have Virginia creeper growing everywhere in this garden. And I think this is the easiest one to tell apart from the poison ivy, largely because it has five leaflets. So Virginia creeper, five-leaved five -leaved kinkafolia, it's called all different kinds, kinds of things. But I really feel like it's unmistakable because you just need to count the leaflets. Sometimes when these are young, they might have only three or four leaflets but they quickly develop the five leaflets. Now I am going to remove the poison ivy because I don't want it growing and I don't want it to get it large because if it gets too large, it will become unwieldy. And I am going to compost it because we do have a compost program here, but you don't want to burn poison ivy because as I mentioned in the beginning, if you get that in your lungs, if you inhale that it actually can kill you and there have been reports on it. So I'm just gonna start to pull these out. I'm just gonna yank them out a little bit by the roots. So you can see I'm just trying to get the roots so I get all of the plant. And again, they're a little bit easier to remove now that they're young. And again, you do not want to get the sap on you at all because this is what actually makes you break out. You can see that this one has this, almost this rhizomatous root that's growing here. Ooh, look at this. Oh, you see how it's all connected? Growing underground, so it's, it's very easy to miss one of these rhizomatous roots and have it growing. I almost like need a second almost need a second glove. In fact, I'm going to get this and try to dig it out. It's really down in there. And I might have to break the root of this and it might just have to pop back up. It might just pop back up again. So there you go, I got part of it out. But you can see this could be a constant battle between me and poison ivy back here. Okay, so this is that, see? And I see one more right here. 
see if this is attached to anything else. There you go. So that's the rhizomatous root system of the poison ivy, and this is really starting to take hold. So I'm going to take this now, again, being careful it's not touching my skin because I did break some of this, and I'm going to put it over in the compost. If you want, you could also trash this, but I'm gonna put it in the compost right here. And now I'm going to carefully take this glove off and put it in the trash because I don't wanna get that on my hands. And if you want, don't wash your hand off with soap, wash it off with water. So I'm gonna go over here to the rainwater catchment system and just wash it off with water because you don't wanna wash your natural oils off because part of your, what your natural oils and your skin and your sebum actually does is protect you against that poison ivy. just in the off chance that I had um, touched it on my skin. I'm also just gonna take these off because I might have touched the poison ivy with these and I'm going to wash them in my washer and likely probably separately from the rest of my clothes too. So I hope that helps you tell apart poison ivy from all the other lookalikes that you see in your garden.